Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dean's Chat, where we discuss all things podiatric medicine. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Jensen. I'm the Dean at the Arizona College of Podiatric Medicine and the host of the Dean's Chat podcast. We have a super exciting episode today. We are bringing back Scott Scooter Metcalf. Uh, We introduced him to the podcast community back in episode 13 when he was getting ready to go on a worldwide surfing competition for adaptive surfing. Welcome to Dean's Chat, Scooter. Hey, hey, aloha, uh, mahalo nui loa, it means thank you very much. Yeah. Well, it's great to have you back. You know, Scott, um, Scott Scooter will go back and forth. You know, the episode we did four months ago was one of the, had rave reviews, right? We had downloads like you wouldn't believe, the yeah. I, tons of views, and I can't go an entire week without somebody saying, hey, Jeff, what happened to your buddy Scooter in his surfing competition? So I thought it was only appropriate that we get you back on the show and and see how your summer went, right? And uh, But before we get started, maybe the best thing to do is reacquaint the audience and the listeners uh, with what adaptive surfing is and, and kind of recount what you did over the course of the summer. Okay, well, there's quite a movement. And in fact, um, the ISA, the International Surf Association, the World Para Surfing Championships are coming up. And those are November 12th to the 15th in Huntington Beach, uh, California. I, of course, you know, am very interested in attending that, but I, my fundraising um, has stalled out in lieu of, in light of the worldwide events like Lahaina um, has really taken a focus of my energies of getting them uh, monies and stuff. But back to, um, there's this huge movement to, of inclusion. My website, aloharecreation.org, is all about inclusivity for adaptive individuals. And then add, you and I aren't getting any younger without revealing our young ages of, what are we now, 20? Um, And um, we're, so I want to include older um, adults too. And instead of them being relegated to their wheelchairs, you all are in, you know, have this background of podiatry and diabetes is a huge issue and uh, morbid obesity, obesity. I want to get those people um, off the couch. They can still be in their, their wheelchairs, but I want to get them doing things as minimal as bocce ball at the beach or horseshoes or, you know, there's this whole movement of, of doing these bean bags and stuff. And, but just get them in the water because immediately they get a, a, better range of motion out of that they get um they get a increase in their heart rate um and then how this comes back to me being an uber more i what's the grading i'm like a highest level of athleticism for my disability i'm a below knee amputee um and i'm uh, 11 centimeters so i'm pretty short um and um i I'm in the standing two division. There's 18, there's nine categories for our adapt surfing worldwide leagues. Um, we, I'm on the, just the infancy of this movement. And we had three major events last year and they were Waikiki where you interviewed with me with the bot podcast. Um, I didn't do so well there, but I learned a lot. And then um, we went to Boca Barranca, this world famous left wave in um, Costa Rica. And I did really, I did well there. And then um, we had the finals at Oceanside, California on my birthday. So I had a lot of motivation, a lot of giddy up. That was September 10th. And I ended up miraculously t- taking fifth place in the world. Wow. And I don't even really consider myself a surfer yet but I think I am now, you know, and, um, and, uh, you know, just for the audience, Jeff and I are involved in many things. Um, like he's a world-class shooter of, which is an Olympic sport with, um, 12 gauge and stuff. And I do triathlon and I do, um, you were kind of alluding to what I've been up to. Well, I just took my division at a two kilometer rough water swim. It's an Olympic sport. They go 10 kilometers in the Olympics and we went two kilometers and I was stoked, you know, and it was very emotional because it was West side. It was um, all uh, predominantly 
Lahaina people. So there was a lot of emotion that day. Um, so I've been swimming um, for training for um, surfing. You want to, it's no secret, you want to get in the water, you know, and you want to go to all different surf breaks because inevitably, like at Oceanside, California, these hot shots, uh, Jeff and your audience, they they brought a, a knife to a gunfight. They brought the wrong tool. I hooked up with a local surf um, uh, legendary instructor there. Spike is his nickname. And I said, Spike, you got to set me up here and, and line me out. And uh, forgive my slang, but I said, like, hook a brother up, you know, and, and um, let's do this. So he got me a soft top which is kind of frowned upon in the surfing world. You know, it's not traditional and all that. It's not a hard surfboard, but you can um, stand up easier on it. And in these competitions, there's complete strategy, like you're shooting and you want to, um, so you want to get, get waves. You want to catch waves. So I go there and I'm my first heat. I'm with the, I, I thought I, I said to Sean Rengold from uh, Puerto Rico, I said, Sean, you're going to win this whole thing. And you're going to be the world champion. And I'm in the lineup with him and in the heat and he couldn't catch any waves. And I was catching waves, Wow! you know, and, and then um, he just nipped me in that heat, but we had, it's like, there's like a repertoire. I, I, I don't think if that's the correct pronunciation, but it's, you can, it's a follow up and you can meet each other again. Well, I beat him the next time. Wow. And, and this guy is really good. And, um, what was fascinating is I got what's called a walk off wave and, you know, the time was going down and there's less, less than a minute left and I caught a wave and I'm everyone stoked and everything. I come in and my coach, Chris Courtois of um, Adaptive um, Surfing Academy in uh, the North Shore of Oahu. This guy's a gem. He's so cool. Um, just a wonderful human being. And he's very knowledgeable. And he's like jumping up and down. He's like, Scooter, you're in the finals. <laughs> and I'm like, hold your shorts, you know, keep your shorts on, coach, you know. And because it's like they do a countdown five for, you know, for the last five seconds. And they're like, Shawnee um, Whitaker is up on the board. And my buddy Shawnee aced me out on the last wave. Mm -hmm. It's a 10-point system. He only beat me by 0.37. Now I'll remind the whole audience. I just started this, you know, I'm a rookie and, but the future is bright for this. And like yourself, uh, for if, if your constituents don't know, Jeff was one heck of an athlete, everything he touched, he did well in like little league. He has all these trophies and stuff. <laughs> myself too. I played little league baseball and I skied and yada, yada. We are blessed. And so I'm an athlete that brings his athleticism to uh, surfing, where I don't have this history like the others. One of our guys, uh, uh, Yachman uh, Balulu, he's Israeli, uh, bless him. He's there going through unprecedented hard times there, and we care. Um, but he's, this guy's a stud, and he's a former pro, pro surfer. He's a former surfer. Wow. And then he's a below knee amputee now, longer than I am. Uh, like 20 centimeters and and he so he has that whole surfing background well I didn't you and I are from Madison Wisconsin Menominee Falls Wisconsin we we didn't grow up surfing so um but I get in the ocean often and I do everything in the ocean I stand up paddleboard like yourself and um I stand up paddleboard surf I this morning I paddled my outrigger canoe so as a as a a competitor uh, my coach told me you know, and I took, you know, you probably do this with your shooting. I, I go to the oldest, most experienced person and I'm like, I rub elbows with them, you know, and I was like, hey, you know, I want to know there's a word in Hawaiian called mana'o. That's your the knowledge and wisdom. And and so I I seek knowledge and wisdom from these people and I get the skinny and I want to cut to the chase because um I didn't pay my dues, you know, right. so. I, I'm playing this touch up game. So, um, and, and your crowd might be a little frustrated because I, I'm kind of um, really, I have a lot of emotion, a lot of energy, a lot of passion. And you can imagine what this does for people, this sport and this whole movement, 
And you're seeing it on media, on network TV and everything. They want us. Corporate America wants us in their commercials. They want us on their 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 snippets, Sports Center, ESPN, which you and I live by. They want us, you know, in the mix because wow. it's fascinating, it's empowering, and it's magical for everyone. Everyone benefits. So yeah. Huntington Beach is coming up. It's the International Surf Association World Parasurfing Championships, Pismo Beach. I guess that's near Huntington. I'm not real familiar with that area of the world, but I sound like a comedian. I was once riding my bike from Crescent City to Tijuana, and we go through Huntington, and a riot broke broke out. I guess it's a real radical place with like surfers and the whole punk surf culture and all that and and but that kind of sounds like a comedian how you're i was riding my bike through huntington beach and a riot broke out <laughs> you know they they flipped uh uh cop cars and stuff but so i'm trying to really get my act together with my fundraising to which you know you have several tribes i have many tribes with my i was a professional whitewater specialist jackson hole wyoming and all over the world chile and stuff and then um, so I've got that tribe. I've got my ski tribe. I was a professional skier for 13 years and working two Olympics and and then my surf culture and then our wonderful high school friends who you and I still really, you know, keep in touch with. So I made six thousand dollars before Lahaina and because of wonderful people like you and our friends, you know, and um the seals of the world, the Patty seals and, and stuff. And, and um, so I'm not quite there though. I usurped all that money to, for these flights and stuff to go to the aforementioned three events. So I want to try to go to Huntington beach, but the big prize is next year, this goes big time and we are professional surfers and the league it's uh, adopted after and follows mimics the world surf league which you all can get on cable TV. It's kind of uh, channel 20. And um, this, we get a thousand dollars for a win, 750, 500, 250 for fourth place. Well, I'm close, you know, and then I don't have to do all this fundraising if I get sponsorship and stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm currently soliciting Ray-Ban, which beautiful sunglasses and, and Olakai sandals and, um, so, um, but the big, big deal that I'm training for is in 2024, there's going to be 10 events. Wow. I can't afford to go to all of them, but we're talking, there's going to be, the first one is what I'm really aiming for. And it's in Byron Bay, Australia, and it's March um, 12th through the uh, um, 17th. And that's the Honolulu Bay. Honolulu Bay is on Maui, and it's this amazing surf spot. It's the Honolulu Bay, if you will, of Australia. Australia. And my friend and compatriot, he's um, uh, quadriplegic, and no, he's paraplegic. He's um, no two bottom legs. Mark Mono Stewart is the race. Or <laughs> with your and my Jeff and I have run hundreds of marathons and <laughs> done many i've done 42 triathlons and stuff but i keep wanting to call these events races but they're they're um surf events and he's the race the, the surf director and he'll be participating and i'm stoked for it so my eyes are set for australia 2024 and that's the first event of 10 and i don't know if you all know your audience but there's they do this on artificial waves now kelly slater has the surf ranch in california but I, on this um, uh, tour event in Snowdonia, Scotland, there's an artificial wave. Well, you've never surfed an artificial wave. I'm, I've never surfed an artificial wave. I'm going to. My coach has invited me to go to Honolulu, Honolulu and surf there to, to test it out. There's an artificial wave there. I'm not so all about it. Apparently, because of the cement and stuff, your boards get pretty beat up and you know, your body. But to go further, there's an event in Spain. There's an event in in um, South Africa. There's um, events in um, Badalit, some of these world famous spots like um, um, France. And then the, the events were such a success. The finals at Oceanside, California, that will be um, there. And then Boca Barranca in Costa Rica. 
So um, you can see how excited I, I am. I can't afford all these events, but you never know. I mean, I do have a new um, website. It's aloharecreation.org. So, you know, and I'm getting a, a 5013C, a, a nonprofit, because this isn't about money. This is about participation and inclusion. The more you and I get the word out, word out, thank you. Like I've gotten because of you and your tribe, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this for inclusion of people calling me and stuff. Um, sure. So, and we've got quite a beautiful movement on Maui here. And um, we've helped out the Lahaina cause um, and all that. That so. Um, I have. Hey, can we switch back a little bit? I wanted to ask you some more yeah. about your surfing. You know, uh, our mm -hmm. audience remembers uh, when we talked previously. You had a traumatic accident. You crushed your left leg. It resulted in a below the knee prosthetic. And you've always been active, but I'm interested because this is kind of like the mind of a champion stuff. You know, how do you? How did you get the confidence to get on a surfboard and then get proficient and then go off and do these world championships? And it was evident to me because you and I have talked throughout this whole time. You got better and better and better each event. I don't know. Is event. Is that the right term? That is absolutely correct. And, and so I, I'm, I'm interested in the mindset that, that drove you because, you know, we were texting back and forth when you were in the mix, you're, you know, in the mix to win. And there's a good chance that you're going to continue that path going forward. Um, what is it psychologically to, to overcome, uh, you know, the, the, uh, trials and tribulations of having a prosthetic limb, Scott, I mean, to be, to be competing at a world level, uh, just interested in the mindset. I believe you have to really look at the, the options, you know, your options and go, OK, well, sitting on the couch, click, click, click ESPN. How much sports can you take in? You know, and, and um, I went through the trials and tribulations of every amputee. I thought that everyone would be looking at me. I thought I would became a hermit. Me, Jeff, Chatty Susan right. became a hermit. You know, and just to digress, what you, what we just touched on with Lahaina, you gave me chicken skin. That's a saying in that the Hawaiians use. And it, it just, it made me emotional again, you know, and that's so important for the world to, to not lose track of, of, you know, of Lahaina. And, and now we will put our efforts toward Israel and, and, and that, but, um, to the mind of a champion, you know, I'm just going to blurt it out there. You, your father, my father, Mike Jensen, your brother, your son, Danny, um, have given me such great inspiration because you're winners and we're winners. You got to have the mind of a champion. You got to imua is Hawaiian. It's two words, actually. It's I-M-U-A. Um, um, it's it's a chant for the 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 the, uh, the the you know the big Polynesians that the uh, uh, going on like to intimidate their foes and it's like you got to go forward in life. There's there's no why digress. You know you'll just be miserable. And um and to get detailed that day that I flipped the vehicle and I crushed my tib fib um I didn't feel any pain. You know, because I was in Ironman triathlon physical fitness. And, you know, since 17 years old, I've been very physically fit, like 1% club. And, um, you know, you and I, Jeff and I have run several hundred mile races uh, together and 50 milers. You know, I ran a 50 mile Ice Age trail with his mother, you know, <laughs> this amazing woman. We had great moms, Sharon Marie Fuller, Metcalf, and the Mrs. Jensen, Carol Jensen. And, um, they were, you know, with people like that around you, you emua, you go forward and you don't sit and mope and stuff. And, and, um, but it's very interesting with the adrenaline dump that day and my training as a full on federal mountaineering range ranger, you know, this, you can't cheat your way through a being a Denali, you know, mountaineering range ranger, you know, or Yosemite search and rescue or Long's Peak, um, uh, climbing ranger. Devil's Tower, and I learned such skills that I calmly took my iPhone out. You'll love the priority. My girlfriend at the time, who you met, uh, Jane um, Franco, this amazing woman, 
I call, I said, Jane, meet me at the e emergency room. I had a terrible accident. Calm, cool, and collected. I called 911. They had fentanyl and morphine. I've never touched it since. Um, on board, main line, it was in 10 minutes. And um, uh, my it's the last time I drank uh, orange Fanta soda. My, my buddy that I was working with that day was a former pro, like uh, some professional league in California wide receiver. So this guy felt pain and he had oxycodones on, 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 and he said, Scooter, do you want um, to take some, I have like three hydrocodones or, or oxy. I said, yes. You know, <laughs> so he brings a Fanta soda and those, and I took them right away before the medics, the paramedics and the paramedics were right across the street. And it was just, I just, you know, with the bad comes good. I got really excellent medical tr uh, training. And then the people like this amazing gentleman in front of us, um, Dr. Jeff Jensen, you sprint in, you know, you're a busy guy. You're like busier than Obama and, and Biden. And, <laughs> and you jetted in and here you are like the next day and you're at my bedside and my bestie who you stayed with, you know, that's like the the Ohana system. You know, we have this other amazing friend, James, um, Jimmy Herbaugh and his wonderful wife, um, uh, Paula Libby, Miss Libby. And, and they, you know, like yourself, I have a great support network and you really end up separating the wheat from the chaff with your support network and your family members. You know, you see who steps up and not, you know, and we're fortunate, you and I. So um, <clears throat> it's the mind of a champion. It's a mua. It's um, uh, no pain, no gain. If I, I could take the screen right now and show you what I'm looking at. I have an Indo board, which is a balance board. There's not a day. Uh, segue to you. What day are you on consecutive day of your meditation practice? <laughs> I don't know. It's like you know, 1800 something. Yes, that's my <laughs> point. And then I practice passage meditation through Eknash Eshwaran. I tried to turn you on, but you you have your scene that works for you. And um, and it works for me because you can see how hyper I am. You know, and um, you have to use that motivation, that hyperactivity. And um, I'm not really diagnosed, but, you know, by you and I, I, I just have a, I'm I love life and I have a zeal for life and I can help people that are sitting on the couch with that. And I can teach them about Imua and all it takes that you don't have to become a champion adaptive surfer. It takes one foot in front of the other or one roll of your wheelchair or assist of getting organized with the people that help you out because some of the categories with the adaptive surfing they need a pusher and a receiver and generally it's these amazing watermen and water women that are stud surfers and they're champion swimmers and stuff and it's unbelievable this movement how it has empowered more than just that individual population of disabled um, adaptive people it's an it's empowered able-bodied people that are amazingly intelligent and amazingly um, um athletic and then we even have these people adjuncts like these um we have um these massage therapists that go to each event and they take care of us and it's like we're nascars we get our Lomi Lomi technique, our deep tissue massage, our a, a some structural integration. Um, and you know, we get we get chiropractic treatment and stuff before we go out on and and perform. So it takes a village, as they say, you know, mm -hmm. and um with um specifically with being getting better and better and better, it takes an open mind. You know, it's like really when you get right down to it, some of these categories they don't have a lot of competition and such but that's not the point participation right. is the point and empowerment because there's a high suicide rate with this population and there's a high suicide rate with your your of course you're seeing a lot of veterans in this and i'll take this time and say come on people can we get over this disrespect for veterans you right. know 
with we need to focus money on healthcare, you know, and uh, and uh, the you know less divisiveness and you know people. This is where I really can focus in on. on you have a lot of doctors and 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 um, uh, medical professionals listening to your po- podcast and. My God, navigating workers' compensation is, I mean, you have to have specialists just to do that. You know, I have an amazing homeopathic doctor, and he's become my primary care physician, Dr. Nathan Ehrlich. And this guy is ripped. He's starring in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. He has his own salsa band. Like yourself and me, he's a he's a Renaissance person, and he's a surfer. So I go to people like yourself that are the real deal, that are Kanaka. They are the real deal. And and I get their advice. And um, he's been, you know, how many small businesses in Maui, you know, that have lasted 33 years? Sure. Not many. You know, so this guy knows what he's doing. And I get an adjustment right after this. I go up the hill 17 miles and I go to Pukalani. The clearing of the heaven is Pukalani. Uh, uh, the hole in the clouds to, for the heavens is what puka lani means. Puka is a hole and lani is the heaven. And so I, I get to go to this and I'm stoked to go up there because he treats me with such respect and he cares. And he's, um, I got him to be a Green Bay Packer fan, <laughs> but he's a Jets fan, Aaron Rodgers. And you walk in, he's got a little gnome and it's a Jets gnome, you know, <laughs> and I love that, you know, and and it's just, you thrive on this kind of small kind uh, behavior, you know, and you take the little small things from people and you build from that, you know, like, you know, I hope I've been an influence on you a little bit with your meditation and yoga. You know, I practice yoga. I've done it since the since 1999. Thank you, Meg Perdue, whom you've met, the gorgeous ranger, mountaineering ranger that I worked with. You know, she's just this amazing woman, you know, and, and, um, Another woman, Karen Hilton, she was a ranger up there, and she really helped me with that movement of being, you know, a whole food plant-based diet. I'm not a Nazi, you know, I'll go grind prime rib with the best of them, but I (laughs) primarily eat a whole food plant-based diet, and and I'm a member of a uh, consumer-supported agricultural co-op. Every Wednesday at one, I get excited like a Labrador puppy for my uh, my delivery. Um, oh, by the way, uh, crowd, uh, Jeff and I have a Labrador um, dog <laughs> background. I Ab- love those dogs. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so, hey, yeah. Scooter, I noticed over the course of the summer when you were traveling around, um, there was a lot of camaraderie between you and the other competitors. And uh, could you comment on that a little bit? Well, we know how we've whittled down the demographics. You know, we are disabled. So that's one uh, demographic population, if you will. And then within that, we are athletic. So that's another within that we surf within that we're good enough and have the wherewithal, the funding and whatnot, or we're creative with that. And we participate in these events. So then you have quite a limited population here. And um, um, I got to do a quick shout out to Red. Uh, He's from like the Oceanside area and him and I just corresponded on um, Instagram and, and Facebook. Um, I call Facebook a break book and face crack. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Great. And, and, I helped him. He showed up at Oceanside. He participated and now he's stoked for life, which is a hashtag. It's an organization that we're, isn't that a great organization? Stoked for life. And then um, my homeboy here on Maui, amazing individual. He's a bilateral amputee, Joshi Bogle. This guy is amazing. There'll be a documentary that I'll, I'll, I'll turn you and your, people on to and um this guy surfs big time he's from jackson hole wyoming so him and i have a bond there because i lived and ran a kayak school and did my climbing the tetons and all that in jackson um but um we have this focus group you know and 
it's so much fun because they're really fun people, you know, paraplegics and quadriplegics. They want to party down just like you and I, Jeff and I have been known to do some beer drinking and, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, um, you know, having some fun and within reason and, and, um, and they're just a beautiful population and of people. And, um, and I'm going to say something profound. I'm a below knee amputee. I don't consider myself disabled. I just, I get after it. You were asking me what I'm up to. Well, I won my division of, of the Sophie swim and I'm planning on going to Bermuda at some point. There's a swim week. Um, I'm going to try to grab like you and your lovely bride and get you to come to something like that. And because there's a 400 meter swim that you could do, you can, we can get you through that, but there's a, I want to do greater distance, uh, 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles of swimming is an Olympic event, but I want to do the 5k next. Cause I do Ironman distance 2.4 and, um, but it's a whole swim week. But so I'm, I want to go to, um, Huntington beach, so, um, and that's, uh, November 12th through the 15th. And then, cause the Paralympics, I mean, Paris, not quite Paris, but we're going to, we're going to have, um, Paralympic, um, surfing. Wow. It's going to be an Olympic sport for Paralympic athletes. And I'm not there yet. I'm not good enough, but, but there certainly are people that are going to represent and, um, then um so we have byron bay coming up and then the whole gamut starts again of 10 events and i'm not i'm gonna pr try my darndest to at minimum go to the finals and go to costa rica but i want to go to snowdonia and i want to go to spain so um you know and i'll get creative and and get um get motivated to to do some better fundraising that, yeah. that's great say um you've as if uh, swimming and uh, surfing and all the other things you do isn't enough, you took up a recent hobby, and I understand you're you're actually playing before large crowds. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I won this um, <laughs> at like this amazing band, Kane Koa. It means strong man. But the leader of the band, his Ohana, his real name, his is Kane Koa. Isn't that cool? And he, it's like a jam band of like Grateful Dead fish, but they sit and it's all ukuleles. And there's a U bass ukulele, which is a bass, which is very rare to play. So I won this beautiful um, um, Kala ukulele and um, I, um, I took a workshop through the the legend you could google roy sakuma s a k u m a i we believe he's the best instructor of ukulele in the world and uke is a it's a bed bugger it's a it's a it's a, a head lice and lele it means bouncing head lice ukulele and isn't that cool <laughs> yeah. and um the so he's like i go to this workshop and i kind of like i got it a little bit you know and and we just um he, it was very rudimentary and basic, like uh, 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 um, F and, and G seven and D and 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 we he trained us and like twenty of us he invited me specifically and I took him aside and I said, Roy, you're a legend. You gotta play us a tune in front of the crowd tomorrow because I've noticed in all the years I've gone to watch you, you never you never get to be individualized and play a solo. And he's like, oh, no, no, you know, last time I played uh, was 20 years ago at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> you might have heard of Carnegie Hall. So long story longer, I get to go to this, and I'm meeting the mayor, and, and you know, when we we did the ha again, and, and our mayor's big. He's like 6'5". 240 and he's um and he's got a jurist doctors i respect this guy he's he's a lawyer and stuff and he was a judge and and then i get the the mc he, she's famous alakai paleka and she's like oh scuda your father jerome metcalf owned the ale Hale, the ale house and the, the rusty harpoon 
a man of great manao. There's that word again of knowledge and wisdom. And 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 she's like, oh, I heard you had a wish. And and um, she gets me on stage and she's saying that she said, you know, um, I, I, and I heard that you did a surf competition. So I said, oh, yeah, we went uh, uh, four of us from Maui, Josh Bogle, Sean Lewis, Bigfoot and um, uh, Aaron Paltz. We all went to the finals and represented Maui. But it was really, really tough to represent Maui because of Lahaina and the sadness. And I coined a term. It's a disaster. Um, um, uh, guilt, you know, for, for training, because you're out there training, surfing, you asked before, you know, about your actual surf training, and it was tough, you know, to train in lieu of, I always get that phrase wrong, in light of Lahaina, and, um, and so every time I've ever surfed and caught a wave, Jeff, you smile, because it's cool, it's fun, it, you rip, it's, it's cool, and and so you know people dead and you're you're we're out trying to surf uh yeah. and train so you know i could have done it but um i did a lot of dry land training too like pop-ups are called and 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 and, and things um the um so i get on stage and she interviews me and roy sakuma agrees to play and and he plays misty and I'll post it. It's amazing. It's this beautiful tune. And he played it at Carnegie Hall 20 years ago. And it's magical. And he said, Scooter, this is for you in front of everything. Like me, I'm not worthy. You know, I'm just <laughs> another person. And but, you know, my background and my vibe, it all it comes <laughs> back to you if you are highly motivated. You well, know? I, and, would, I would tell yeah. you, I think you've made a 360 um full circle since 2017. There were some tough times trying to get back, you know? So congratulations to you, Scooter. I mean, I'm so proud of you. It's awesome. Thank you. I just appreciate you so much and your family and your whole um, tribe, you know? And, and uh, I, if, if I can get the one person from this podcast, then we succeeded. There you, you go. Know? There you go. Yeah. So uh, would you take a couple minutes and talk about your GoFundMe page, your website, where people can contact you? The floor is yours. Okay, thanks. Um, if if all fails, you can get a hold of me on um, Facebook or Instagram. Um, I have a sophomoric nickname. It's Scoot Yak, and I got that for usurping my uh, um, BI grants and my, my funds in college. I, they called me the road scholar, you know, and, and, and then I scoot what, well, you know, when you do, um, ultra marathons and marathon stuff, you gotta have an efficient gait. So scooter and I'm short five, eight. <laughs> so, but, um, my, I have a, a newer website. It's called aloha recreation.org. And it, it goes into my history and about this whole movement of recreational inclusion for adaptive slash um, um, uh, challenged people, you know, and and um, so it's a aloha recreation.org. And then uh, my GoFundMe is a uh, help scooter surf um, the adaptive world championship. And it's Scott Scooter Metcalf and uh, Scoot Yak on Facebook and Scooter Yak SM on IG. But you'll if you just do Scott Metcalf and um the ISA, the International Surf Association World um, Surfing Championships are November 12th through the 15th at um, Huntington Beach. I want to uh, go to that. And and um, that doesn't look so good right now. Um, and then, but for sure, the um, Adaptive Surfing World Championships series with the start of, um, it'll be at Byron Bay, Australia. Thank you, Mark Mono Stewart, the, the um, event coordinator. And he's a world champion too. Um, yeah. And uh, um, so, yeah, that's what's going on. And uh, we're, we'll take it from there. And I would say get in the water for the high alkalinity and eat right and sleep right and, you know, meditate and do yoga, you know? <laughs> Love it. Love it. Well, Scooter, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to come and share the updates. Uh, I know that a lot of people are interested in following you on the on the surfing circuit, if you will, and all the other great things you're doing. And and, and best of luck in Lahaina. I know it's such a difficult time for everybody. But thanks for joining me today. Yeah, bless uh, um, Lahaina and, and Israel. And if I could do one last um, little um, push, it's um, 
you all are so important and it doesn't take military money to get proper funding. It shouldn't get military money to get proper funding for prosthetics. And prosthetics are so important. I'm going through a change of my prosthetics and um, they don't have them down yet. They, they're not comfortable. They're not, they're not right yet. We don't have this wired. And then intraosseous is out of the question. I get in the water um, every day. It would be a nightmare with infection. Um, so, um, we need to fund prosthesis, um, work and, and, um, research. And, um, so let's put our money, you know, uh, 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 uh toward things like that. You know, it, it's important. I know we got our hands full with all kinds of other priorities right now, but, um, we need funding for prosthesis well said. Uh, work. Yeah. I agree. I concur 100%. Thank you, Scooter. I guess that's a good segue to, sure. you know, we've been on some hard times here, yeah. you know, and what what's your thoughts on, you know, you've seen the worldwide momentum for Lahaina. And I don't know if you and C Cecilia have spent any time in Lahaina, probably you've been everywhere, but um, it was magical place. And there's quite a beautiful movement of um, the Hawaiian word is lokahi. It means unity. So we're in some tough times political, politically, and you know it's it's you no know, it's so challenging and so divisive. And there's you and I don't even have that H A T E word in our lexicon in our nomenclature. We don't use that because we're not about that. But this lokahi is the real deal here. And we've had people come out of the woodwork and there's amazing people that are like legendary watermen and, and like Archie Kalepa step up, who's a real leader on the West Side. He's born and raised. This guy, this guy is a surfing and lifeguard hall of famer, but he's now in the Lahaina restoration politics. And then Zane Schweitzer is a world all around waterman. There's a, a finals in Australia and um, he and his Ohana, his family has really stepped up his mom and his dad. His brother is a uh, internationally famous videographer for ocean and uh, Maddie Schweitzer. And then um, there's quite a movement, of course, of the um, local Kanaka Maoli people, the native Hawaiians. And then we've all, there's so much bling that like the Oprah Winfrey's, bless her heart, the rocks of the world and the Jeff Bezos, you know, of their amazing you know, graciousness, you know, uh, 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 um, gratitude. Um, but this is bigger than you and I and bigger than, and then now you have these other situations and right on my GoFundMe, uh, which is um, help scooters surf the adaptive world championships. Um, I, I had to take a breather on soliciting people. And, and for the record, I have never asked a person, you know, this personally to give me money. It's about share what I'm into about this recreational inclusiveness and and it'll all work out. So I put a slowdown on my GoFundMe because it wasn't appropriate at the time, you know, and what was more appropriate appropriate was Maui strong, La Howie. Lahaina strong hashtag Lahaina strong hashtag Maui strong because we're talking 98 people at minimum lost their lives there and now um, to get specifically into Lahaina town is that now these way too high um, amounts of arsenic cobalt and lead are coming out in the burn zones of in Maui, there's a split. I'm where is the low point, so it's the windy. It's Ma'alaya Harbor. Well, there's Haleakala, which a lot of the people around the world have heard of. It's a 10,000, 20-foot volcano. Well, there's Kula is a beautiful area of the world up there that, like the Oprah Winfrey's of the of the, the world own property up there. It's just gorgeous, rolling hills and goats and cattle and, and jacarana, these purple trees and just magical. Well, 
they have the way too high. Kula burnt too, big time. And we're talking like 19 homes were lost and people, you know, um, there, fortunately there weren't any fatalities, but still there's, there's a raft there, you know, so they deserve some, you know, love in this whole grand scheme of things. And then, um, so high arsenic, high cobalt and high um, lead. So we have to be really careful about going into these zones and you have to put on the zoot suits and stuff, the hazmat suits and the footwear and they have to be escorted. And so there's a whole movement, there's a council that's been formed. There's an amazing politician. I never, you, you know, take that with a grain of salt, you know, an amazing politician. Her name's Tamara Paltine. I actually lifeguarded with her. So she's got amazing diversity. You know, to be a, a, a county council person is quite difficult when you have these incredible catastrophic cataclysm events happen, you know, like a wildfire. So she's really stepped up and she's a key player. Um, uh, Angus McKelvey is our higher up senator and our governor has been fantastic. And our mayor, I saw him at a vigil and I said, sir, May I give you a hug? And we did a proper um, ha breathing uh, 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 meeting where you uh, breathe each other and you look each other in the eye and you go forehead to forehead. And and his wife was there um, and we just hugged and, and uh, a local uh, news um, uh, cameraman caught that and it was on the cover of the Maui News. And this isn't fake. This is real stuff, you know. And so people have really stepped up and of course, you know, there's going to be these conspiracy theorists and all that. You guys have even been on the periphery of some of that, you know, with like like radars, lasers that started the fire and stuff like that. I don't believe in any of that. That What it was was a perfect storm of um, high and low pressure sh systems hitting each other and um, 80 now mile an hour winds. And I did get... Um, uh, uh, clarity on I was saying that the fire got to 2,500 degrees F mm. or 2,000 but it got it was hot <laughs> you know oh, it was 1,750 they're saying so you get it you know we're talking vehicles melted and stuff like that you know and um, but I am so proud of the way the world but more specifically Lahaina people and Maui people stepped up and uh, we just got a huge uh, uh shipment from um a, a, a western island Kauai, which all you have heard of and oahu has been just amazing so um you know that's that's the state of the union and something even amazing is i don't know if you and your crew have known about heard about the tiny home movement but in oluwalu this ville west of me about uh 10 kilometers about six Point two miles, eight miles. There is a movement and a construction um, uh, movement um, that are building tiny homes for people, and they can use them. And there, you know, there's an adage now with reduce, reuse, um, recycle, and they're using like these shipping containers and decking them out with Wi-Fi and central areas for showering stuff. So. And then they're movable. So the people can reacquire their property in Lahaina and um, they can get rid of the hazardous materials, of course, and all that. And there's experts helping them with that. And um, and you're this is strange, too. The insurance adjusters and stuff has, have really stepped up. And very rare do you say that. Normally, they want to take their money and run, you know, and. And I don't have all the answers and, you know, but I know that um, with the bad, a little bit of good can, can come. And the little bit of good has been the lokahi, the unity. And with these tiny homes, they can transport them and put them on the people's individual property for the time being. Of course, they there's going to be proper rules and such. Um, this is a good little more segue. I believe what's going to happen to Lahaina Town is the right thing. And the right thing in Hawaiian is Pono, P-O-N-O. -O, and that's always do the right thing. And this 
this leadership council with Arshi Kalepa and Tamara Paltine, I believe are going to do the right thing, be malama pono, that means care and respect of doing the right thing. They're going to rebuild the derivation, like the history of Lahaina, which was Lele. It was called, uh, the, the proper name was Lele, in the days of K King Kamehameha the second and third. And there was a canal with a residence on an island. I believe they're going to redo that and make that happen. And it's called Moku Ula. And um, it's near what's called some of your um, your people would know. It's 505 Front Street, which was a little strip mall and um, with tennis courts and stuff. So they don't have to uproot landowners there. It's all there because there's tennis courts and it's a surf spot that I, I really have done a lot of surfing there. And I used to teach surfing there. Um, I'll do a shout out to uh, Bully uh, Surf Ohana. My, my buddy, Robert Potter, has an amazing surf school that's really cultural there. And we really want to see him make a comeback. And um, so I think there's going to be like, it's going to be very, very pedestrian and e-skateboard and e-bike and, and walker and runner. This is where you and I fit in. And I think they're going to get eco um, tourism out of this with more triathlons and more um, marathons and and foot races and endurance events. And I'm suggesting that they threw around the complete perimeter of the burn area that they do a proper walking path in memorial to the whole zone of that burn. And then. I studied sociology, criminal justice, and you're gonna get a your crowd's gonna get a laugh out of this deviance. And um, so, it's proven that if you have paths out your door, there's less domestic violence. There's less. It's like, oh, honey, you know, you're blowing at your top. You need to go for a walk, you know, dear. So get out of the house and go for a walk. And so I think it's really important, and that we need to really, really capture. Archie Kalapa, this person that I really, really respect, he was just a stud uh, waterman and lifeguard, and he was my ultimate boss. And he um, he said, hey, we need to basically carpe diem. We need to seize the day on this, and there's no turning around. We need to do it right this time around. This is our chance. So recreation, ecotourism, and go to the source and do it right of what Lahaina Town, Lele, if you will, was all about. And, um, you know, that's a start. Yep. You got to say something. I'm talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say we've been to Maui before. We went to the Maui Invitational Basketball Tournament. I ran the Maui Marathon right down Front Street. It was one of the most beautiful areas in the world. And uh, just broke everybody's heart to see those fires wipe wipe out that area of of the island. So uh, our hearts, are, of course, out to everybody in Maui, and uh, it's so awesome that you're involved in, in making it a better place going forward. Um, and so thanks for joining us, and all of our listeners. I I know you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google Podcasts. Please give us a five star rating, and of course, if you're watching on YouTube, please become a subscriber. And by all means, check out Scooters. Uh, the show notes will have all of the websites and everything so you can follow Scooter as he's uh, being the best surfer he can possibly be. Congratulations, Scooter, and thanks again for joining me. All right, follow me with this, Jeff. I'll say aloha. Ola, aloha. Malama Pono. Malama Pono. Uh, hui ho. Hui that, ho. Yeah, it means, uh, you know, a greeting, love, and... Um, uh, care and respect to doing the right thing and I'll see you um, on the rebound. I'll, I'll catch you um, later. Cheers, yeah. cheers, buddy. <laughs> All right, bye-bye, right. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Mahalo.